Regardless of if you're optimistic or pessimistic about Malik Monk and his future here in Sacramento, the Orlando Magic are probably on your mind. A team with money, a team that's ready to compete, and a team that, at least on paper, could use a player of Malik Monk's skill set. But how interested is Orlando in Malik and how much money would they be willing to spend to get Malik from Sacramento to Orlando? Philip Rossman Reich of the Locked On Magic podcast joins me to discuss just that right here on Locked On Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all season long. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side and that side of me loves Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or on Google Play. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports anchor and reporter for ABC 10 News. And we've been talking about Malik Monk's future and and, and, and previewing this tough offseason for months. Even with the expectations that the Kings were going to be in the playoffs, we all were thinking and certainly hoping that the Kings would still be playing basketball right now. Of course, we know what happened. So the, the offseason conversation starting earlier than we wanted to. But the team that we've been discussing for a long time as to our, 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 our primary concern to take Malik away from Sacramento has been the Orlando Magic, right? They got the money to spend. They're a, a team that's in the playoffs right now, a, a team that's trending upwards, a young, exciting team that is in need of a point guard, in need of a, a, a ball handler and a facilitator and shooting like Malik Monk brings to the table. So Malik makes so much sense for Orlando to go out and pursue. But Orlando, even if they have money, that doesn't mean they want to lock it all up on, on uh, one player just to take him away from Sacramento, right? I had a feeling that if Orlando offered the $17.5 million that Sacramento offered straight up, that Malik would choose to stay in Sacramento. But Orlando certainly has the money to, to put an offer on the table that is too good for Malik to refuse. Are they willing to do that, though? Instead of speculating, why not get the Orlando perspective? Philip Rossman Reich of Locked On Magic joins me. He makes it very clear that Malik has been a name that has been discussed in Orlando for a while. We're not just making this up here in Sacramento. He's on their radar. But dare I say this conversation might give Kings fans a little bit of hope? Maybe, just maybe, Orlando's not willing to put out the money that it would take to pry Malik from Sacramento, or maybe Orlando might be thinking of using that money in different ways. Take a listen to my conversation with Philip. The Orlando Magic might be in the playoffs right now, but it's never too early to start talking about your future. The Sacramento Kings are already in offseason mode, and the number one piece of importance for this offseason for the Kings is the future of Malik Monk. Well, the Magic, in my opinion, are the team that's the biggest threat to take Malik away from Sacramento. But is that just a fear here in Sacktown, or is Orlando serious about trying to snatch Malik away? Instead of trying to figure that out ourselves, why not, not go to Locked On Magic and get some answers? Phyllis, uh, Philip Rossman Reich of the Locked On Magic podcast, taking a break from the playoffs to join us to talk about this offseason a little bit. Philip, first and foremost, thanks so much for joining me during this busy time. First question I'll throw out there, how much has Malik's name, if at all, been discussed in Orlando? And if it has been, for how long has it been discussed? Ma Magic fans are definitely discussing Malik Monk, and, and he is definitely on the list of players that the Ma that, that at least fans believe the Magic should target. Um, it you know he's he checks a lot of boxes that this Magic team wants. They're like they want they need shooting. Like that's that's a, beyond clear. They probably need a a secondary attacker. And while Monk isn't like a true point guard, like he's shown a little bit more ability to attack off the dribble. And, and he's obviously been in big games and had these kind of spurty games where he just kind of randomly drops 30 on a night. And, and the magic kind of, the magic certainly needs someone 
who can shoot volume threes. Like they were 27th, 28th in the league in three point attempts per game this year. Not a big part of their game for good reason. They're not great shooters, but to get where they ultimately want to go, they're going to need someone that teams fear getting hot. And, and that that's Malik Monk. You said he's on the list. Where is he at on that list? If you were to ballpark it, like are there players that you think are ahead of him that the Magic, or at least Magic fans and discussions, they would rather go out and get? Or is Malik kind of close to priority number one? He he might be priority. He might be priority number one. You know, I think yeah. there's obviously been a lot of that reporting about the Magic being a threat to grab Clay Thompson from the Warriors. Um, which I have been very skeptical of just because of the age uh, of the age and, and some of the defensive concerns, not that, you know, Malik Bunk is not an ace defender, but he's, he's at least younger and can, you know, in the right culture, perhaps play a little bit, a little bit stronger defense. But, uh, as far, you know, as far as looking at the, uh, a pretty fairly weak free agent class, Malik Bunk's name is, if it's not at the top of the list for the magic, it, it's probably number two, just because, the age matters if you're going to invest four years, you know, 90, $100 million, whatever, whatever the case may be. If you're going to invest four years in a guy, you're going to want someone that's kind of on your timeline uh, and someone that's that's going to produce. Uh, and, you know, like Clay Thompson's kind of on the way out. You know, the other candidate that a lot of people have probably put in is D'Angelo Russell from the Lakers. Mm-hmm. You know, he's up and down. He's kind of wildly up and down as well. You know, Malik Monk is probably the the guy that checks mo- most the most boxes for Orlando, considering their team needs. D'Angelo Russell is definitely more of a true point guard out of that group, but Malik in Sacramento over the last two years kind of exploded as a as a ball handler and a facilitator, and you can already kind of imagine the two man game that he could create with a Paolo Bancaro or even a Franz Wagner to some extent uh, over there in Orlando. Assuming, let's say Orlando does go out and 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 pay Malik and bring Malik in, and we'll talk about money in just a second. Are you instantly thinking there's our starting point guard, or, or what are you looking at in, in terms of like what you think Malik's role would be in Orlando? Yeah, I mean, I, I think his role would be a starting guard. Um, you know, this Magic team is really fudgy with positions. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like essentially, Paolo Bancaro has been running point for the team this season. They'll have mm-hmm. Paolo bring the ball up. They'll have Franz bring the ball up, and. And to me, that's why Malik Monk is such an interesting prospect and why he, I think he is high on the Magic list because ultimately what the Magic want is five guys who can do everything. Mm. They want to be able to have a point guard who can play off the ball and run run the show. They want shooting guards who can run pick and rolls. They, they want guys who can be threats you know, as screeners, even if you're guards, so to run like either ghost screens to, to get out to three-point line or, or the like. Um, this is... This is very, you know, Monk's skill set and the way his skill set has grown, especially in his years in Sacramento, certainly fits a lot of the things the Magic are looking for. If he's going to be defending opposing point guards, he's got good size for that. He can he can complement Jalen Suggs, who runs a little bit of point two. Um, it's it's really just about having the skill versatility and, and positional versatility that this team likes. And again, the shooting is is obviously the big attractor and what the Magic need more than anything else. That it, having him be able to do all those other things, it just just makes it even more appetizing. Let's talk money a little bit before we talk about money specific for Malik. You were telling me before this uh, this interview even started, the Magic have money to spend, and this is the summer that they they really need to spend it, right? Yeah, this is this is like the I've been telling people this is the last summer for the Magic to have free money. Mm-hmm. Um, Franz Wagner's due an extension this summer, so he'll get paid. The you know he'll probably get a max, but he'll get paid next for the twenty twenty six season. J- Jalen Suggs is extension eligible this summer. Paolo Bancaro is not too far behind him. You know they've got Jonathan Isaac's got a partially guaranteed contract, but they'll probably pick that up. Joe Ingles is a team option, so they you know they have if they decline all the options for all their upcoming free agents, they could have somewhere north of uh, somewhere around, I believe $60 million of cap room. In reality, they're probably playing with around 25 to $30 million of cap room. I forget what the exact number is, but they have enough money to, to throw some weight around, make some trades. If they want to take in more salary on trades, which is probably, which is just as likely for them to, to make their moves uh, and, and add a pretty high quality, like mid-level free agent as well. If, if that's the direction they want to go, obviously this is not a particularly strong free agent class. And so that obviously puts a lot more, you know, emphasis on where a guy like Malik Monk would go um, mm-hmm. because there's just fewer options. And I know, I know the deal with him in Sacramento is they only have early bird rights, so they can't, 
they can't offer him kind of the, they can't offer him, they can't, you know, Orlando can beat them on a, on an offer is, is I think that the main thing we want to, we want to get to the magic, have the money. They should have the willingness to spend after this season and, and where the seasons ended up. Uh, and so we'll see where the magic ultimately go. Yeah. Market value is going to be something that's so interesting for free agents this year. Cause it's not just that, that like the, the King situation, they can only offer essentially 17 and a half million dollars. They could technically offer more, but they would have to free up a bunch of cap and it's, it's pretty impossible scenario for them to do that. So essentially 17.5 is what they have on the table uh, for Malik with his early bird rights. That being said, like, there aren't a, there are very few teams with money period this summer like so many teams are financially locked up to where in some cases that's an advantage for Sacramento in retaining Malik but the threats to take him are very very clear because of the amount of money that they have really the two teams that have jumped to mind are Orlando and San Antonio the biggest advantage Orlando has over San Antonio is they are a good team that can become great with the addition of Malik Monk versus I'm sure Malik is enticed by playing for Greg Popovich and taking 20 plus million dollars to be uh, in a two man game with Victor Winbanyama. That team has a ways to go in the Western Conference. Orlando's ready to compete right now. So, in in your opinion, you said that that like 20 to to 30 million dollars of of room that they have or money that they have to spend this offseason. How big of a chunk of that you think they're willing to offer Malik to pry him away from Sacramento? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is the that, that's the like twenty five and a half million dollar question, maybe. Um, mm. I, I th this Magic front office has had tons of cap room to spend over the last two seasons, really since they made the trades with Nikola Vucevic, and they've been happy to kind of roll things over with Jonathan Isaac and just wait out his his health. They've been willing to roll over and wait out Markel Fultz's health. You know, they gave a two year twenty two million dollar deal to Joe Ingles with a team option on the second year, so you know. How aggressive, honestly, we will know June 30th how aggressive the Magic plan to be in free agency because that's when they have to guarantee that's when they have to pick up that option on Joe Ingles' contract or not. If they let that go, that means they're going to be spending a lot of money because they're still at like 23, 24 million dollars with even with Ingles. They let Ingles go, then they're up to like 31, 30, somewhere in the 30 to 35 million dollar range uh, to spend. So, um, it, this this front office has played things very very slowly and very patiently. There's there's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. Um, they have they have been willing to kind of see where things develop. And the thing we don't know is what does this front office look like when they're aggressive. Um, I tend to think that they're not just going to go out to spend just to spend. They're going to be mm -hmm. they're going to spend very purposefully. So if Malik Monk, if it takes uh, you know twenty five million dollars a year to get Malik Monk. I think they pass, you know, if, if there's some solace for Kings fans, I think the magic are going to try and get as close to that 17 and a half million dollar number that they can. I don't think they want to go much higher than, tw than 20, 21, 22, because they know, yes, we have to spend some money this year. We have to invest and improve this team now, but we also have a $25 million a year contract coming for Franz Wagner. We also have a possibly 27, 28, $30 million a year, maybe even more, coming for Paolo Bancaro. Yeah. They don't know how much they're going to have to spend to keep Jalen Suggs. That's probably another $20 million player. And then they got to figure out, well, Jonathan Isaac's making 17. We probably want him back on less. Mm -hmm. How do we get him back after his contract expires? Is that even possible? Mm -hmm. The Magic have to spend this summer and improve their roster, but they also have to begin thinking about, okay, how do we align our contracts or how do we align things so we're not caught in a bind if, the bottom falls out or the team doesn't improve as, as we, as we expect, you know, you don't want to get kind of caught and stuck somewhere that you don't want to be quick pause here in the action. As I tell you about a couple of great sponsors here of the locked on Kings podcast, the first is Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level, especially with the 2024 Nissan Rogue. This car is perfect for your city drives or your great escapes. Class exclusive Google is built in as you're always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, right? You have Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store, all built right into the 12.3 HD uh, or 12.3 inch HD infotainment system that is a part of the vehicle. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure or 
what about the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder? It has room for up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing when adventure calls. The Pathfinder is there to answer. You can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or even the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's episode of the Locked On Kings podcast is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. We're going to pause here because I want to talk to you about Monopoly Go and why this game is scratching my competitive itch. It's getting me through these playoffs with the Kings not playing. You don't understand really how great this game can be. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. There's more that you can win together, the more awesome prizes that you can unlock as hard as you work together. And there's so much to get. You can get unique uh, stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Oh yeah, there's demolition and robbery in Monopoly Go. Plus Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges a ton include their unique mini games like digging for treasure or uh, robot uh, pachinko machine there's just so many ways to play and there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multiplier multipliers for everything that you win or rent frenzies look Monopoly can be boring when you're playing it in person. It can feel long and drawn out. Monopoly Go fixes all that and makes it fun, exciting, and unique every single time you get in on the app. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So go su- get off the bench and download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on with Monopoly Go. So for you, Philip, let's say you put on your Orlando Magic GM hat right now. What is the offer that you're putting on the table? This doesn't necessarily, this isn't necessarily your ma- Actually, it's, it's a two-part question. First part is, what is the the offer that you're putting on day one just to at least start the conversation? And what's the maximum that you think you're comfortable going for Malik Monk? Yeah, for for Malik Monk, again, I think so much of this too, and I know Monk is older than Suggs. I feel like, I feel like, you know, the Magic have had all these rookie contracts. And so their best players haven't been their highest paid players. And so I feel like no matter who they sign, like it, unless it's Clay Thompson and that's the cost of doing this is then again, this is the reason why I don't think Clay Thompson's really an option for the magic. They're not going to pay monk more than they're willing to pay Jalen Suggs. Mm. Like Jalen Suggs, like if, if the magic have a big three or a core three guys, it's Paolo Franz and Suggs and Suggs. Mm. I, I mean, if you guys, you guys saw this when, when the magic played the Kings Suggs is the heart and soul of this team. Like mm. that, that dude, that dude makes the whole engine go. And it would not surprise me if, Honestly, if the Magic's two biggest signings this offseason are extensions for for Franz and Jalen Suggs. So if if I'm gonna cap, you know, if if I don't know exactly where they're gonna cap Jalen Suggs at, because the 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 hidden thing on all of this is a, a contract that feels bad today may not feel so bad next year after the new TV deal kicks in. And and while I know the cap can only ra- raise by 10% each year, um a $22 million contract may feel much cheaper next in, in two, three years. So mm. I think of I think that the Magic, again, are going to try and hug that $20 million dollar mark. Uh, I think four for 80 is probably too lo- is probably lowballing too much. So it's probably going to be, they're probably going to be looking at like a four, somewhere between four and 88 or four and $90 million, mm-hmm. uh, I, I would think. And, and that, again, is going to play into, okay, if we're willing to pay Malik Monk this, we got to be willing to pay Jalen Suggs, a, you know, a little bit more than that. And so... All this stuff, I think, interplays as far as what the Magic plan to do with their future. And so, again, that's that's why I, I'm. I think the Magic will make some major moves. I kind of think they'll make trades more than they'll they'll dive into free agency. I, I I've actually kind of floated the idea that trading uh, trading a couple players from their roster and then using their money on bigs who are marketed differently and, and valued differently than than guards are might be the way that they go, you know, chasing after like a Nick Claxton or Isaiah Hartenstein instead of chasing after a Malik Monk or D'Angelo Russell or Tyus Jones or a, a, or a, a Clay Thompson. Well, what you just said there at the end might give some Kings fans a little bit of hope of, of Orlando maybe bowing out of the Monk sweepstakes. Just so you know, kind of the idea that I've had in my head too is I think that $22 million is the, part, the yeah. that's kind of the point of no return for Sacramento. What I mean by that is if I'm Malik Monk and $22 million is put in front of me, with 
the Orlando situation. Again, a good team in the Eastern Conference is expecting to compete right away. The the starting spot that matters a lot to Malik that he hasn't had here in Sacramento. By the way, I think if the Kings re-sign Malik, they'd happily give him a starting spot. So I don't think that's a point of contention here necessarily. But to me, that $22 million has always been the number. If you get a 22 or above in Orlando, they put that offer on the table in front of Malik. I don't know how he turns it down. I don't know why he would want to turn it down, even if he has his connections here um, in Sacramento. But one of the things, Philip, that Malik has said, and he's been very transparent about it, he's very aware. Like He's he's excited to be in this role because he's never been in this position in his career where he has options, and he's he's been searching for this payday for a while, and I'm happy he's going to get it. But he's also said, like, I can get paid more money and end up in a worse situation. So if you were like understanding how your organization is, and, and maybe it kind of falls into what you just said about the magic are going to view Suggs as more of a guy than Malik. If you're like advising Malik almost as someone who understands the magic situation, what about Orlando would you be hesitant about for a player like Malik Monk and signing to join them right now? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, this Magic team, what's made this Magic team really special this year, and 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 I think most of us following a team would say they've overperformed. Like it, it, it definitely feels like you know, it, it Orlando feels like last year Sacramento, it, yeah. and, and so I think we're we're a little you know we're we're, we're you know all, not expecting it, but we're preparing for kind of a step back as now you deal with expectation for the first sure. time, and yep. and and just how narrow the margins are because remember the Magic only finished as the five seed because they won on the last day of the season. If they would have yeah. lost that game in Milwaukee, they would have been the eighth. So, Oof. you know, success, success, success and failure in this league is very, very, very narrow. And that's, that's something you got to learn too. The, the thing that would concern me about Monk is because this team is just so close and connected that if he comes in, doesn't win the starting job or Jamal Mosley says, I think you're better off in the bench role. You'll still finish and close games, but you're better off in that sixth man role to boost to boost the bench, which has been very good for the Magic this year. Yeah, anyway, is he going to accept that role even with the money? Is 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 what's more important to him, the role in winning or the money, uh, mm. or, or 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 what's more important, the role, the money, or the winning? Mm. Um, and you know, I think Monk has come a long way from his days in Charlotte, and and obviously he was you know kind of almost out of the league. You know, he yep. saved himself with that season with the Lakers. The Kings gave him, gave him the chance and he took full advantage of it. And those are the kind of people that I think the magic generally like, they like people who are going to work hard and treasure these opportunities. But if he's coming into the situation, expecting to be the guy or expecting things to be catered to him just because he has the money, that's not the kind of person the magic are looking for. The Magic are looking for someone who's going to work well with the group, integrate with the group, and be about winning. That's that's ultimately what matters for this team. This episode of the Locked On Kings podcast is also brought to you by DoorDash. If you want to make mom smile, you can start Mother's Day with flowers or surprise her with gifts from the brands that she loves delivered the very same day with DoorDash. DoorDash helps you accomplish two things, right? The first thing is how easy it is, right? You know what you want to get her. You get it for her. It's delivered to her door right then and there. Super easy. But the other thing is, if you're like me and you struggle to find the right gifts, DoorDash has recommendations based off of establishments or places that, that she might like or, or things that she might like to do. DoorDash will help you find the items that you want to get and then deliver them right to her as easy as possible. Does your mom have a sweet tooth? Maybe she's a, a tech enthusiast, a beauty connoisseur, or she's outdoorsy. No matter what she's into, you can make her smile with a fruit or a flower bouquet, makeup, tech gear, workout wear, and more, all available on DoorDash. Get thoughtful gifts that she deserves with convenience that you need. You can choose same-day delivery, or you can schedule a week in advance when flowers and gifts should arrive to her door with DoorDash. You can plan ahead if that's the kind of person that you are. Get all your Mother's Day gifts all in one place and get 50% off your next order up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail order right now with code locked on NBA. That's code locked on NBA. Order using DoorDash today. Terms do apply. And you talked about the three point shooting. That's that's what's attractive formally. Kind of on the other side of the coin of the question that I just asked you. When looking at Malik play, and again, it's your understanding of being on the opposite side of the country or you're, you're covering a team on, in, a, in a different conference, completely different circumstances. So I know you're not watching Kings basketball every single night. So this is where maybe I can provide a little bit of context. But 
based off of your understanding of Malik, is there anything that you're hesitant about or you think Orlando might be hesitant about with, with paying him the money that it would probably take to get him there? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the thing that the Magic would be hesitant about is, you know, while they love, I think they want guys who can be secondary playmakers and want guys who can be, who can kind of play, like I, I, I call it skill versatility. It's not positional versatility, it's skill versatility. Do you have mm. skills that are not typical for players of your position or size? Mm. Um, I think these playoffs, though, have kind of shown that the Magic really do need a true point guard. Like they need someone who can calm the team down and organize things. And so, you know, Jalen Suggs hasn't really turned into that. There's some hope that he could, that, you know, at least be a Marcus Smart type organizer. Um, you know, Paolo Bancaro is running a lot of point guard. And one of the things that they've done well uh, in games three and four is they said, Paolo's not going to run as much point guard. We're going to run a few more, few, run him a little bit more as a screener, as a roller, um, and and try and get him the ball in spots more than try and have him create as the initiator. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's going to be one of the, I think the, the big challenges for the magic is they definitely want him doing that, but he can't do it all the time. He needs, he needs some easy shots. And so to me, the biggest question with, with adding monk and playing him next to Suggs is a little bit, you know, are, you know, monks, obviously a better shooter and a better offensive player, but are, are they a little too similar? Mm. Um, can, can, you know, can their skills complement each other other than just having, Malik Monk, who's a gravity shooter, and Jalen Suggs, who's shot 39%, you know, shot 38, 39% from three this year, was a better shooter this year. We'll see if that la- we'll see how much that lasts heading into next year. But I think the magic, you know, I always I, I've been telling my my listeners this all season long. We don't really know what the magic need until we get to the playoffs and we mm-hmm. see where your whole where where teams like start poking holes in your in in your offense and in your defense. Um I think what we I think what we're seeing, he, what we've seen this this postseason, is yes, the Magic do need a point guard. They mm-hmm. they need someone who naturally can bring the ball up, calm the team down, organize them, get get the ball to Paolo, get the ball to Franz in spots where they're comfortable and they can score, and just organize and calm the team down. So I I, I think Malik Monk has a lot of point guard skills, but he is not a point guard, and I still think that's something the Magic needs. Well, the Magic are still dealing with the postseason right now, and I want you to enjoy the ride and not try and fast forward through it like we're trying to fast forward to free agency here in Sacramento. But way too early, kind of gut feeling, Philip. Do you think? Let's say we're, we fast forward to the to day one, or let's say training. July first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, well, let's even go yeah. beyond it. Let's go okay. training camp. Malik Monk in a Magic jersey or not in a Magic jersey? It doesn't matter where he is, other than Orlando. But do I, you think he's a Magic or not? I I like. I'm I'm probably too conservative on this stuff. I tend to believe free agents stay stay put, and they stay put more often than not. I know Sacramento has limitations, which makes the situation a little bit more unique. Um, but I, I I tend to believe the Magic are gonna are gonna zig where are gonna zag where everyone thinks they're zigging. That's what they've done. That's what Jeff Waltman's done. I you know it's 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 too it's too hard to predict what Jeff Waltman's gonna do. I, I have the feeling that Monk is not quite what the Magic are looking for. And that they're going to, you know, seek seek what they're looking for elsewhere. And and, and ultimately, like I as as exciting as free agency is, most most deals are done in trades. Most movement is done in trades. I think that's where the Magic are gonna gonna find their improvements this summer. Philip, I think there's a lot of members of the Sacramento Kings fan base who are hoping you are right and are maybe a little relieved to hear that because a lot of them are probably clicking on this episode going, oh God, here we go. I, I, I'm not, I'm not just saying this to protect the Tower Beam Alliance here. We, we got, we got to, we got to, we got to watch out for each other here. Well, we're still rooting for you hard in, uh, with, with the Orlando series and in the playoffs. Orlando has been such a fun team to watch this year. The Kings and Magic have had some fun battles over the last couple of seasons. So hopefully that continues going, uh, going forward, but I appreciate you taking the time, my man. Go back to enjoying your playoffs. Good luck in the rest of the postseason, and you can get to all this uh, offseason stuff when it actually becomes the offseason for you. It's 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 nice not burning through this offseason content this early. I, I I don't I don't envy you. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going in the barrel already, my man. <laughs> Appreciate you, boss. Huge shout out to Philip for making time during his uh, busy schedule here with the playoffs. He's actually like an hour after we recorded this on his way to hop on a plane. Uh, so my man is busy right now, but he made some time to start this offseason conversation. I appreciate him doing that. How you feeling now? Are you feeling less scared that Orlando will take Malik? Are you feeling more scared that Orlando will take Malik? Or are there other teams that are also out there that we haven't really talked about and touched on that you're like, yeah, that's the team I think is going to snatch Malik Monk away. If so, 
Let's talk about it. I can always get the locked on host of that team to come on and we can talk about it too. We're going to defend Malik Monk as much as we can here, right? And uh, the more information we have, the better. So I hope you found that conversation enlightening and, and also entertaining. Uh, and we got plenty more coming for you all off season long, whether it's following Malik Monk and his future, following the Kings free agency, the draft. We'll have plenty of stuff coming up with the draft and what the Kings could do with the 13th overall pick. We still have a lot to wrap up with last season, right? The, or the season that just wrapped up and I have, I have grades and kind of a progress report and stuff uh, for, for each player in the front office and, and stuff like that. We got a lot of stuff to get you through this off season. So make sure you keep it right here with the locked on Kings podcast all summer long. Appreciate your support. Can't wait to have you join me on the next episode. Until then, my name is Matt George. You've been listening to locked on Kings, part of the locked on podcast network.